Hello guys, good morning. Um, I just want to say for someone, I'm going to read you guys some words of encouragement from the Bible. Um, and I also want to say for someone that God said he's not going to drop the ball on you. Like, he's not going to drop the ball concerning you. You know, um, I'm not really big into sports. I like, you know, like boxing, badminton, tennis, stuff like that. But um, I'm reminded of like, you know, when they're playing basketball and they're, you know, you got your team have the ball and they're getting ready to score. And like the person that have that ball and you, you know, you practice so much with the ball. You guys practice people see well people don't get to see the the reason why i'm just coming on doing this guys because i wasn't going to do it um i just was going to come on for another couple of days but i really um, felt led to record this video for someone and encourage you guys this morning but um basically the imagery is you know like people don't see like the behind the scenes of that team practicing like the sweat the blood the tears the late night um, them training their bodies and maybe sometimes um, like exerting certain muscles so that they can stay in performance and like the team and the group oh I well, didn't even think to take these headphones out because I was um, doing something else guys so hopefully y'all can hear me with the headphones in but um yeah but basically the group is being unified and coming together and being encouraged and the person that has that ball is qualified to have that ball now the coach may um give someone a, a they may give someone that's been on the team for a while a chance to like prove themselves or to score or the person that have the ball is qualified to have the ball and that coach have faith and trust in that person that they're going to score especially if they have like a track record and history of scoring so that's what god is saying for someone like he but in this case it's not man that he have the ball in their hands concerning you god is the one that's not going to drop the ball on you you know like you know like you know that god is going to cause you to score he's going to cause you to succeed he's going to cause you to be favored he's going to cause you to score so whatever your promise is that god promises are that god has given you or like whatever your situation or petition or circumstances is you can trust that god will not drop the ball He's not going to drop the ball. And there's even some of you in certain situations is looking like that clock on um, that timer is going out. As I know, back in middle school, I used to be big into like going to games and dances and um, football games. You know, you meet your friends, go meet your little boyfriend, whatever, whatever. This back in the day, y'all. Um, and you just go, you just have fun, show your little outfit, meet up, eat, joke, dance, whatever. And, you know, um, I'm reminded of games. I'm Like I said, I'm not into sports like that, but he just kind of reminded me so I can get what he's saying to me to share with you all. So, like, when the person, um, like, for the football team and the basketball, they have, like, a little timer thing up or whatever. They got, like, a little timer thing to show you how much how much you have oh thank you jesus and then also it has even in high school too i went to a lot of games too but um also um the lord just reminded me like you know it has home and it has guests so the home team like that's the home team but then like the guests or the visitors have their thing too so the guests and the visitors people that's not the home team have they crowd with them and then the home team how they crowd with them and then a lot of times it's not like nobody that's just Oh, I'm for the home team and the visitors. Like you have to pick a side. Well, you don't have to, but really you pick a side. And um, you know, like when that when that countdown thing is going down, um, like the the numbers is going down, and you only have a certain amount of time to score or win, you know. And God is showing me that for many of you, like by certain situations or circumstances, like you looking at the calendar. Here's what um, your mortgage company said. Here's what your landlord said. This um, thing is due. That is due. You got this medical situation. You got this situation going on with your spouse. Or even if it's not related to any of that, you got this situation like you've been petitioning, giving to God. And God sees that in the natural, it looks like that little timer thing is going down. But really what he's saying is he going to score for you because he, he not bound by that little timer. You know, them coaches in those natural coaches, they are aware and they have confidence like we're going to win this. 
We're going to win. I have faith and confidence in my team. And see, God is your coach. It's very rare that a coach will get on, you know, and score. That's what the teammates are for. So God is sending you angelic protection. He's sending you angelic and divine deliverance. Like his angels are on the team with you and he's sending you the right people. You know, he's allowing you to stay connected and God is the one that's going to shoot the hoops and score for you. You're not going to strike out even like in baseball, you know, because I used to watch a few baseball games too back in the day. Like all these are live games I used to go to with my little friends or whatever and watch. And I even with the baseball, you're not going to strike out. God is going to come through for whoever you are, whoever this video is for right in the nick of time. So my prayer for you is peace of heart, peace of mind. You know, God has not brought you this far just to bring you this far. And let me grab my Bible. Hold on, God. And I'm just going to read some scriptures just to encourage you. It's still morning time, guys, and I still have on my um, clothes, my night clothes, so I don't want the camera on me or whatever. So, And I didn't know I was going to record, but the Lord was like, you need to pick up and record this for somebody. This is going to encourage them. So I'm just being obedient. And let me go to, um, he told me to go to my scriptures in the notes. Sorry, guys, about the loud noise in the living room. They need to calm down. So I want to just read some scriptures. And I'm just, I don't mean seriously, they getting excited about the TV or whatever. So the scriptures that I want to um, read for you guys, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to read all of them because it's a lot. But I guess I'll just read as much as possible for the um, this time on this video. And you guys may get this video later on in the day, but it's about like 11 something or whatever on Saturday. So I just want to encourage you guys. Um, let me start. Let's start with um, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. Hold on, guys. Let me get some water. And glory to God. All right, let me let me find Deuteronomy, guys. Just bear with me today. I'm not probably really gonna be pausing the video too much. I'm just gonna be flowing. Um, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14 is talking about the blessings for obedience. Okay, so if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands. I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed in the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the cows of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he has given you. And the Lord is even saying for someone, I'm going to get back into this, but he said the word renewal, renewal for you. So renewal, whatever that renewal is, if it's emotionally, if it's mentally, if it's spiritually, if it's physically, if it's financially, if it's with a certain company or position or contract, um, a lease, or if it's something spiritually, Jesus, <laughs> sorry guys, the Lord is saying renewal for someone. So I'm not sure who that word is for, but renewal is your portion in Jesus holy name. Amen. So let's do 7 through 14. I think they're watching the game. So the Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people as he promised you on oath if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Here's verses 10 through 14. Then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your ground and the land he swore to your forefathers to give you. 
The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the works of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. Amen. So um, now I'm going to go to Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 is a word for somebody. Hold on one second, guys. Let me go there. So um, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And thank you, Jesus. And the Lord is even saying what um, we were talking about in the beginning, part of the word, um, with the timer not going out. It may even be some of you listening that maybe you have a situation like with your mom or your mother-in-law or a family member or somebody you stand in the gap with um, or a brother or sister. The time are not going to run out for them either. God sees their situation. God sees your intercessory prayers in agreement with them and blessings to them. And he's going to bless you for that. So you can have peace in your heart that God have that situation. Like whether it be your own situation, personal, or as someone that is connected to you, God has it all in the palm of his hand. You know, just like we used to sing that song when I was a little girl, he got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands and he has all things concerning you in his hands, you know, and everything and everyone concerning you concerns God. So he have it in his hands. It's just like, you know, if you're married or you're a parent or you have a best friend, if they call you with something and it concerns them because you care for them and you love them and your loyalty to them and y'all bind a relationship, it's going to take like because it's going to take like a concern on you too you're going to be concerned because you're going to be like well what's going on you know is there any way i can help or you know is you're not just going to brush it off so how much more our heavenly father to love and care for you amen so i'm going to read this one more time come to me all you who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I'm gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the next one, guys, that I'm going to read. Um, Hold on. I'm going to go to Luke. And guys, we read a lot of these before in full context. So if you missed it, you can read it or just go back in your private time and read it in full context. I always encourage you guys to do that. Um, But I want to read um, verses Luke. 6 43 through what is this 49 yeah okay because the next one is seven okay so let's talk about a tree and its fruit and the wise and foolish builders so it says no good tree bears bad fruit nor does a bad tree bear good fruit each tree is recognized by its own fruit people do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart for out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks, or basically for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And then um, it says, okay, that's a notification. So verses 43 through 45, it's the tree and its fruit. And then the wise and foolish builders is 46 through 49. So it says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on a rock. When the flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on a ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Okay, so let me go to the next one. Give me one second, guys. Just bear with me a second. Um, okay, I'm going to read that. And then I'm going to go to this one first, and I'll go back and read that one. Okay. 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay, I got to get that one, too. Hold on, guys, because some of them he's just giving me, just giving me in the spirit to read. So I'm going to just be obedient and read it. All right, Lord. So let me put another bookmark. Okay, Isaiah. I know he has to say Isaiah. Okay, I'm going to read... Um, Where is that scripture? You got to show me where it's at. Hold on, guys. You got to show me where it's at. Where is that one when he said this one? Here it go. Verse eight. Here it go. Okay. Isaiah's not Isaiah one. I'm sorry, guys. Isaiah six. So in the year that King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord seated. We're going to read verses one through 13. Okay. I saw the Lord seated on the throne, high and exalted. Thank you, Lord, for helping me find this. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were ser seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, holy, holy, Holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cry. I am ruined for I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. Because verse 8 is for someone. Verse 8 is for someone. We're going to read it. So, and I live among the people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the sea rocks flew to me with the live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Here is verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom, and this is a word for someone. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. And that's a cry for some of you on here today. God is saying, who's going to go for them? Who's he's going to send? And you're saying, send me, Lord, here I am. So let's read 9 through 13. He said, go and tell this people, be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Make the heart of this people callous. Make their eyes dull and close their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Then I said, For how long, O Lord? And he answered, Until the cities lie ruined and without inhabitant, until the houses are left deserted and the fields ruined and ravaged, until the Lord has sent everyone far away and the land is utterly forsaken. And though a tenth remains in the land, it will again be laid waste. But as the terebinth and oak leaf stumps, when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the land and we did do an entire isaiah bible study so we read all of these chapters in full context let me go to the next one guys and let me put a bookmark in this other one that we're going to read after this one and glory be to god guys um yeah okay so we're going to read zechariah three clean garments for the high priest this is a word also for someone so, because if you go back in Zechariah 1, it's talking about a call. We did a Zechariah series also, guys, but it's talking about a different things. One is a call to return to the Lord, the man among the murder trees, four horns and four craftsmen. Two is a man with a measuring line. So now three is clean garments for the high priest. Okay, so then he showed me Joshua is a variant of Jeshua also. But he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan right the accuser the devil right standing at his right side to accuse him the lord said to satan the lord rebuke you satan the lord who has chosen jerusalem rebuke you is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire now joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel the angel said to those who were standing before him take off his filthy clothes then he said to Joshua, see, I have taken away your sin and I will put rich garments on you. Then I said, put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood by. 
the angel of the Lord gave his charge to Joshua. This is what the Lord Almighty says. If you will walk in my ways and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and have charge of my courts, and I will give you a place among these standing here. Listen, O high priest Joshua, and your associates seated before you, who are men symbolic of things to come. I am going to bring my servant the branch. See the stone I have set in front of Joshua. There are seven eyes or facets on that one stone, and I will engrave an inscription on it says the Lord Almighty, and I will remove the sin of this land in a single day. And that day each of you will invite his neighbor to sit under his vine in fig tree, declares the Lord Almighty. Okay, guys, hold on one second. Next, we're going to go to um, Amos. Bear with me one second, guys. Let me find it. Amos 9. Amos 9 verses 11 through 15. Okay, so in that day, I will restore David's fallen tent. I will repair its broken places, restore its ruins, and build it as it used to be so that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations that bear my name, declares the Lord, who will do these things. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman and the planter by the one treading grapes. New wine will drip from the mountains and flow from all the hills. I will bring back my exiled people Israel. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. Okay, so now we're going to read Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, and then I'm going to go to, um, let me put a bookmark on this so I don't forget. I'm trying to make sure I read all these scriptures as, as God is leading for this video and that I don't miss anything. Um, so Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 is the armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth, the buckle around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can distinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helm and the salvation and the sword of the spirit. We did an Ephesians series also, guys, and broke down all the pieces of armor and what they mean spiritually and physically as well. So I'm just going to read. So take the helm and the salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions. With all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. And guys, we're going to read um, a couple more verses and then I'm going to close. Bear with me one second. Let me get some water. Okay, guys. So Psalms 25 is the next one. Excuse me, guys. Okay, so it says, um, this is Psalm of David. Sorry about the burping because I ate um, some hours back. And I had my breakfast, but I don't know. So to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul and you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame. But they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth in my rebellious ways according to your love. Remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, O Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then is the man that fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way chosen for him. He will spend his days in prosperity, and his descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only 
he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have multiplied. Free me from my anguish. Look upon my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. See how my enemies have increased and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope is in you. Redeem Israel, O God, from all their troubles. So the last one that we're going to read is Revelations 1. Uh, we also did a Revelation series, so uh, we read all of them. But basically what it's talking about is um, Christ reveals himself to John, to Apostle John. Um, prologue, greetings, and doxology is some other things. So we're going to read this. So it says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him. Hold on, guys. Okay, to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, who testifies to everything he saw. That is the word of God in the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads the words of his prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. So says John, greetings and doxology, John, comma, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who was and from him who is, sorry, and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits or the sevenfold spirit before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. He's coming in the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So now talk about one like a son of man. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, write on the scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man. That's in, also in Daniel 713. Dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze, glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death in Hades or hell. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw on my right hand and of this, the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels or the messengers of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So you guys have a great day and God bless.